all levels. The scenes coming out of the Philippines are still shocking. New aerial, footage, new aerial video shows what remains of Tacloban City following that record-breaking typhoon. The place of aid flight is accelerating, but it's not fast enough to help the thousands of survivors in need of clean water, food, and shelter. Some cargo flights carrying medical supplies and doctors were able to land. And that's today's World Watch. The scenes coming from the Philippines are truly devastating, but not nearly as agonizing as they must be for Ray T. Ray is a trainer coordinator for NIU International Training Office here on campus. And more to the point, you are a native Filipino whose, whose family lives in the heart of the typhoon's path. You've been watching these pictures more closely than anyone here. So tell us, I mean, tell us, I mean, is your family okay? Tell us what you're hearing. How are you getting the word back um, to what's going on in the area? Uh, my mom is from Leyte. That's the hardest hit uh, region in the Philippines. It's in the central part of the country facing the Pacific Ocean. I was scouring the news and social media since Thursday here, and it's Friday there. And sources of information I got were, uh, one, the, the network news, like you know all of it, CNN, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, and Democracy Now!, all of it. And secondly, uh, the French news sources, Journal de Genève, uh, Le Monde Diplomatique, uh, Nou Nouvelle Observateur, uh, and all of those. And thirdly, Philippine news and TV, they're all ava available online. So I get a sense of different coverage, like BBC covers the news differently from mm -hmm. uh, no, have, have you been in contact with your family and how have you, if you have been? Yeah, I have since Thursday, uh, trying to contact all of my relatives who mm -hmm. are in the diaspora and outside of Leyte. For instance, I have relatives in Manila, uh, where I was born and raised. It's the capital of the country, and Cebu, it's another island. There are 7,100 islands in the Philippines. And I have family in, in, in Canada. We're all trying to contact directly our relatives in Leyte itself, but we were not able to. I, I was just gonna ask that, like how are they getting communication out? How yeah. are yeah. they? Well, uh, since the uh, the storm came on Friday, Philippine time. Uh, there was power outage even before then uh, mm -hmm. as a proactive measure by the government uh, because all of our power lines are above ground mm -hmm. and there was very strong wind, 195 miles per hour wind and there was no, there's no power as of this time as far as I know. Mm -hmm. So word couldn't get out. There's some hotels which have their own generators and they let people just come in and plug in their cell phones. Okay, so, so that's yeah. how they're getting the commu communication out, their right. cell phones? Do you, do you yeah. know yeah. how they're doing now? And finally, uh, as of last night, I was able to get communication from my family, and uh, I should say the majority of whom are fine. I have uh, a couple who might have perished in the mm -hmm. flood. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, family, my relatives, two of their kids have survived. I still have one uh, cousin who's missing, and some people have uh, damaged uh, residences, mm -hmm. and I still have no idea where some of my relatives are. They live in the heart of Tacloban, where we're not able can to we, establish. Can we just um, kind of look yet. ahead into the future and kind of give us a kind of a grasp, understanding of what's going to happen? Um, how does the future um, look for the situation? Well, if I were to look at Haiti, uh, Typh uh, Hurricane uh, 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 Katrina and, and Hurricane Sandy, this will take a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, Haiti has been around, people have been appealing for donation, they were not slowly just trickling in. And Katrina up to now, it's still in a period of rehabilitation. Okay. There, there's a lot of problem and it will take a long time. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the area that actually hit the typhoon. Well, uh, the typhoon was a product of what I would call the unholy trinity. You have the storm surge, you have mm -hmm. strong winds, and then you have torrential rain. So at the time during which the typhoon came, uh, there was no light. People were all scrambling for shelter in the dark. And the whole city of Tacloban is just flattened, literally. Well, we know, like how your family doing is doing is the most important thing to you right now. So how does it feel when you look at these pictures? Yeah. 
Well, looking at the picture, I can, I can have a general sense of despair. However, in the past few days since Thursday till last night, I didn't know how to feel because I didn't know where my family members were. Uh, uh, I couldn't even mourn because I didn't know if they were dead. But now uh, there's unconfirmed uh, news that two of my relatives are, might have perished and they're still missing family. So it's, it's a very gloomy uh, situation right now. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Ryan T., we, we appreciate your visit. Thank, thank you. you so much. So please know that your prayers are with us and your family, and we hope everything works out. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. The day is finally here, the biggest MAC game so far this season. NIU puts their 15th BCS ranking on the line tonight on ESPN2. I'm Eli Gain for NTC Sports coming to you today from Husky Stadium. Now, right now behind me, it's a little quiet. It's windy, but once 6 p.m., 7 p.m. comes around, that's when this field will get electric as NIU is set to take on Ball State for the battle of the bronze stock trophy, but more importantly, for the top of the Mac West standings. Ball State comes into the Cal, but half game up on NIU in the West. Ball State 6-0, NIU is 5-0. And if the Cardinals win tonight, they clinch a Mac championship berth. Now this game features the two best quarterbacks in the conference for NIU. Of course, Jordan Lynch keeping up his Heisman-like performance this year. Nearly 2,000 yards passing through the air, over 1,000 yards on the ground, 32 total touchdowns. But on the other side, Ball State has a pretty good quarterback. It's Keith Wenning, the senior. He is fourth right now in the country in passing yards, 27 touchdowns through the air compared to only five interceptions. The best quarterback NIU's defense will see this season by far. And some other offensive weapons for Ball State. Not only can they put up points through the air, they have a good set of running backs. Jawan Edwards and Horatio Banks both over 600 yards rushing this season with a combined total of 19 touchdowns. Now even though it's NIU's biggest contest this season, Husky Stadium is not expected to be sold out tonight. Now, in order to make the place look a little more crowded, the Husky Athletics Office decided to put tarps up on the student section right up here to my left. Now, they've usually done this every year for about a game or two, but this year it's going to be a little bit different, Now, including uh, some of the cool tarp logos that are on top of the student section. As you can see, on the north and south side, there is an NIU logo, and right in the middle are the bright blue eyes of the NIU Husky staring down right over the sideline of the Ball State Cardinals. So it should look pretty good on ESPN this evening. If you watch the game on Monday between the Bulls and the Cavaliers, Derrick Rose is day to day with a partially injured hamstring. It's expected to be nothing too serious. The Bulls will bounce back and be on the court on the road on Friday when they take on the Toronto Raptors. But that doesn't mean last night there were some NBA prospects playing at the United Center, the home of the Chicago Bulls, for the Champions Classic. The top two college recruits took the stage last night. Andrew Wiggins of Kansas and Chicago native Jabari Parker, Kansas versus Duke. First half, Jamari Taylor with a nice feed to Wiggins, who throws it down, gives the Jayhawks a 10-9 lead early. But Jabari Parker, what a night for him. Great defense after the steal, goes coast to coast and makes the beautiful lay-in through three defenders. 19 first-half points for Parker. And then in the second half, Parker goes up for the alley-oop. Slams it home with the one-handed dunk. Parker finished with 27 points and nine boards, but it was Wiggins and the Jayhawks who take the win. Wiggins finished with 22 points and 10 rebounds. An exciting night for these two young prospects. And in women's hoops, NIU took down Mississippi Valley State 79 to 60. Four Huskies finished in double figures with Naticia Augusta leading the way with a double-double. 17 points and 11 rebounds. 
and hopefully you stick around this weekend. Volleyball has its last home matches this weekend against Ball State on Friday night at 6 p.m. for Military Appreciation Night. And then Saturday, they're back on Victor E. Court to take on Toledo. That game is also at 6 p.m., and it will be senior night for the Huskies, so hopefully you can go and support them. And only hours away from game time here at Husky Stadium, so if you don't have class, you might as well come out here and root on the Huskies. That's all I have out here in this cold weather. The wind's blowing my hair around. I'm getting a little chilly. I'm going to head back over to the studio because that's where you guys are. So let's send it back to you guys right in the new studio. Thanks, Eli. And ladies, you might want to pay attention to how your guy's walking when you're holding hands. We'll explain when we get back. Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, man. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. A new study suggests that men start walking slower when they're in love. Scientists in Seattle asked 22 people to walk around a track alone with a partner and with the members of the same and opposite sex. They found that when they were walking with a significant other, men slowed their pace to match the females. Scientists say that this bonding moment didn't happen with other pairings. Well, that just shows that women are definitely in control of relationships, <laughs> I have to say. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I'll have whatever. to pay attention the next time I'm out with my boyfriend. Yeah, okay, guys, whatever. I'm representing all the men up here. No. I'm just kidding. Women do have a lot of hold on their relationships. Well, that's so all for us that. here today. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll be back the same time Monday. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.